Hey everybody, welcome to Marcy Creates. This is Marcy. And we are going to today continue with some more color theory with the Bargain Bead Box um, Farmhouse Fresh. And as we've spoken before, we have a very neutral palette with just a bit of green, some deep greens and some lighter greens. And so today's project is going to be a necklace. And I think we're going to add as many colors as we can and use up some of these pretty white beads with the veining. And we may pick up some graphic elements along the way in the way of some white and black. Uh, but here is, as I said before, and I've showed you before, our color palette. I did go through, for those of you who did not see those videos, and I picked out pastel versions of the, or tints, I should say, of the green. Um, which is the main color in our box. And so we have uh, pink, we have some mauve, we have some like a sherbet color, but pinkish sherbet, more of an orange, light orange, light yellow. We've got some gold and some copper in case we wanna mix colors. We have the violet, the blue violet, blue, blue green and green. So, I think that's almost everything. Uh, I may have mixed a hue here and there, but, or a tint. But today I thought we would try and do something interesting with all the colors and just kind of do a stacked color thing. So we're gonna put these aside, the copper and the gold, and we're gonna concentrate on silver and the hematite uh, that came in the mix. I may or may not use the chain, I haven't decided yet. We're gonna tackle this focal, which um, is challenging because uh, it's big. It is very pretty, but you've got um, a pretty thick piece here. So I already tried using one of my biggest jump rings and it wouldn't work. So we're gonna have to make our own bale. And then we've got a lot of space between the top of this and the hole. So we're gonna need quite a big round bale. And what I've come up with I think is to wrap something around my, believe it or not, the uh, handle of my, one of my tools may work. My bail making pliers didn't work. So I have some 18 gauge wire here. So first order of business is gonna be a bail for this. So we're gonna, the rest of it's gonna be stringing tonight. And, um, Let's see, I've got quite a big piece of wire here. Let's see, uh, about eight inches. I just don't know, you know, between making the loop and the wrapping, like I said, it's always good to have more. Well, let me trim the ends here. So this is 18 gauge wire, which is pretty heavy duty wire. 16 would work too, but 16 is really hard on my hands. So if I can avoid using 16, I will. Um, so I'm gonna try the 18, but that is a pretty heavy stone. And so that's something to think about when you're making jewelry is, you know, if you've got a, like a focal piece that's heavy like that, one of the challenges is how are you gonna wrap it or how are you gonna hang it? And uh, I'm just warming the wire right now. So I'm gonna wrap this around my handle. I'm trying not to hit the camera. <laughs> you don't need me to hit the camera, do you? And I'm not making a traditional loop because it's just not, this is not a traditional circumstance. So this is what I have. This should work. And we're gonna just come in and make a loop this way. So let's see if we can make that a little neater. Grab these. 
actually let me I'm gonna try to make this more round in the back and just gently bend it this one's a challenge you're gonna find challenges so now I've bent that up I'm gonna move this over I'm trying to make a wrap loop a little bit of one I am gonna have to use my pliers because this 18 gauge is pretty, pretty tough. You know what? Did everybody just gasp? <laughs> you know me, maybe not. Uh, bear with me one second. I have a, I had a, a, a spark of inspiration. I will be super right back. Okay, so I'm back. Did you miss me? <laughs> For you, it's just like one second. Um, I think we'll use some leather. Let's forget the, um, let's forget the metal for a minute. So uh, this is a piece of leather that I had in my stash. I believe it's one millimeter uh, and it's gray, which for our purposes is fine because we're trying to keep everything neutral. We're gonna use lots of color. So I'm going to make a bale with this. So let's see how we can do that. So one of the ways we can do it is by making a loop like this. And I actually like that against the gemstone because it's not going to scratch the gemstone. So I actually do like this. And then I can make a loop here. And then we can do a little wire wrapping or we can tie it in a knot. Let me think about that a minute. I do like the idea of adding a little wire. Let me move this up. So if I tie a knot here, maybe we could tie a knot down here. No, I like the wire wrap idea better. Okay, so let's wrap it first. So I have some, yeah, I like this idea much better, much, much better. And then you could make some matching earrings with, with some of this leather. Um, we may do that Tuesday, as a matter of fact. That'll be a, we'll do a companion. Maybe we'll do some companion. Um, if I have enough of the Howlite beads, we'll do a companion bracelet, maybe an earrings. A bracelet with the leather would be cute. All right, so let me, let me scooch this down here. And yes, scooch is a technical term. <laughs> Uh, I've been enjoying all your messages in our Facebook group and so happy. Those of you that have found the channel and are enjoying the color theory, I'm really glad. Um, it just makes me really happy. And I have lots to show you all because Jesse James Beads just finished their summer camp, um, which I had to work through most of it, but I'm trying to play catch up this weekend. I watched a bunch of classes. If you ever do do the Jesse James Beads uh, summer camp. It's really worth it. I'm using 26 gauge wire right here. Um, we ended up doing all kinds of fun things and it's a great way to learn a bunch of skills. Everybody is so nice. I really recommend it. So you'll be seeing projects. I'll be showing you uh, what we made and stuff once I get going on some projects. So right now I'm just going to wire wrap our leather and I'm going to wrap this a bunch of times so I'm not going to use any glue I know a lot of people like to use glue just because they feel more secure and by all means if you want to you can but I'm just going to wire wrap this and believe me as many times as I'm going to wrap it it's not going to go anywhere So 26 gauge wire. I think 
That's good. We got plenty for the, we're gonna need to do more. So let me trim this. And I'm just gonna tuck this underneath some of the other wires. Kind of like this. And then you can come in with your flat nose and just kind of, we're gonna smish some of this. And now it looks messy. You can make it neater. You know me, I'm a fan of the messy wrap. I think I need my other pliers. These open wider. Okay. Let's see. Let me pinch. I felt that that little guy in there. Okay. You just don't want it to poke anyone, so you may have to play with it a little. And um I did that a little looser than I wanted, but uh, you can always go back and rewrap it if you don't like it. But for the time's sake, this is gonna be our, and then I think I'm gonna make a loop this way. You're probably not gonna really see that because we're gonna do a loop this way. And that's what's actually gonna hang on the, on the um, necklace. So that's fine, that stuff in the inside will be neater. We'll be neater on this side. <clears throat> There's many ways to do this. Uh, this is just one. And honestly, I'm really just trying to solve a problem. I'm not, this is not a technique I've seen anywhere. Uh, it's just a loop and then a loop. So, you know, be inventive. <laughs> The key is you don't want the um, the leather to go anywhere. I think I'm gonna give myself more. And you could wire wrap some beads on this too. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna do that. But I am gonna hide my messy stuff on the inside there. So I would probably wouldn't have, had I known I was gonna do this, I probably wouldn't have made so many wraps on the inside. Um, and as you can see, this, this 26 gauge likes to kink up on you. So I'll probably stop here with this one. Yeah, I could make that a whole lot neater. I like a messy wrap, but we don't wanna... There's messy and then there's crazy messy. We have crazy messy showing, we need to tuck that back in. <laughs> tuck that crazy back in, okay. But you know what? This gemstone is so huge. Um, it it almost needs something substantial, you know. And now we can cut this right here. I always think cuts on the bias look a little nicer. Uh, and also you got these angles, so it kind of picks up those angles. So this is my solution. Now, is it elegant? Possibly not. Could you probably do a neater wrap? Probably, but I think for the sake of the necklace, and let me cut this piece on the inside that's bugging me. There we go. This looks very purposeful, although we came up with it just now. But I like the idea of the leather because like I said, the metal is gonna scratch this. And it's a gemstone and I don't want it to get scratched. So this is gonna be our focal. You could add dangles to it. I thought about hanging one of these here, but I really didn't want to cover the gemstone. So I changed my mind on that. And the keys are too large. Although I do want to do something with the keys. Um, and then one of these guys just didn't seem substantial enough. So I ended up just abandoning that whole idea. Um, we're going to have our color come from our necklace. So speaking of color from our necklace, so I'm going to move some of these hematite over. We are going to keep these out. <clears throat> we are going to need some, whoops, 
looky there, spillage. That never happens in, happens in my videos. <laughs> you know, if you need some crimp beads, there they are. Um, I don't think we're gonna use the chain today. I think we're gonna stick to stringing. And we are gonna use silver metal, I think for the most part. And I'm not gonna use these green leaves quite yet. And we're not gonna use any of the Jasper. We're gonna stick with the white, white beads, the green beads. We're not gonna use the coconut shells. This is gonna be very colorful. All the colors. I don't know how these seed beads got everywhere. But you know seed beads, they like to wonder. Goodness. Okay. I did learn, by the way, a really cool seed bead project from Meredith Roddy. I don't know if you've ever watched her with Beetle On. She is the seed bead whisperer. I learned a lot from her. She taught a great class. I can't wait to show those earrings. Okay, so we have some big white beads, which I think would look cool, you know, maybe on either side. And then as we go up, we'll go to smaller white beads. That's my thought process. We'll go to these smaller ones. So sandwiched in between these, I wanted to do color. So I thought it would be neat to do, you know, the mock rainbow or a reverse rainbow, some kind of rainbow. So like these guys, so then our, the decision becomes, do we want uh, do we want to play around with shiny versus matte versus, you know, um, kind of luminescent? So you got pearls here, and we got some rondelles. I think I'm like, look at these. These are cool. Maybe we'll do like milky. Maybe we'll continue to pick up the idea of these. So if we do green, do we want to do some bead? I think the larger beads look nice with the bead caps. Let's see if I have some bead caps that'll go with those. Oh, these are bigger. Do I have enough? I may have to pull some out. those are too small for that no matter we'll we'll find some more anyway um then we'll go i'll pull some more out here in just a second we will continue up this way so then in between these guys so that's the green then maybe we'll do blue green that's this. We have some frosty beads, but they're, oh, these are cool. I'm thinking about size also. Or pearl, I don't think I like the pearls. I think I like those. kind of like these guys okay so we'll put those and then blue what do we have in the blue that's kind of dark are super light. 
kind of want something in between. That looks kind of cool. Then, we want to do some purple D blue, periwinkle, very peri. I think I see some that may work. And depending how long you want this necklace, you could do another repeat of this. So let's see, do we wanna do, no. Well, these are fun. Oh, I, no, 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 no. Uh, those, yeah, those are pretty. I have an idea for the purple. So for the purple, and also we're transitioning to these, I'm gonna put these English beads then next. We may play with the graphic, I haven't really decided yet, but I'll move them over for now. So for the purple, or violet on our color wheel, I guess it says violet. I thought it would be fun to play around a little. And these, okay, so I think I'm gonna hold off on these English cut beads I do want to have bead caps, so we'll put those there. And then these purple crystals already have little holes in them. I mean, little, they're already little dangles. And I've done this in other projects where I take three or four of these and they make a really cool texture. So I thought we would do that as a breaking point between our um, smaller beads. We'll do four of those. If we don't like it, we'll do something else. Because I also have these really pretty pearlized beads, but I think these will look cool. Let me move. Oh, you all just don't want to know what just happened. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Remember these? <laughs> Guess what? We're not using them today because they're on the floor. <laughs> oh my gracious. It is just not a video without me dropping 800 beads. That was just not fun. I'm going to have not fun. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. Oh goodness. Okay. So we're not using those tonight. <laughs> Let's continue before I destroy my studio. <laughs> Oh, I've lost my mind. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. Oh, it never fails. Get me on camera and I drop stuff. Okay. So, we've got the purple. So, let's do the fuchsia. I don't think I want to do the roses again. Um, maybe these guys. Those are kind of fun. We could do these again, but I think those are too big. Or then we have these. I think those are too sparkly. I think we're gonna go with these. I kind of like the different varieties also, not just in the color, but the beads. Then we'll do another group of these. And let's do pink. I think I wanna do these frosty beads. Nope, those are big. Let's do pearls. 
I'm trying to make them smaller as we go up. If you're wondering why I didn't pick those, that's just my idea. And two more of these. Then we have the peach or red orange. I already spy some I like. Those are smaller than the pearls. Let me move these over. Then we'll do some more white. That looks kind of cool. Like, a, you know, a little rainbow effect. All right. These guys are bigger. Maybe you want to go with those. Those are super similar to the other ones. Mm, let's do these. Ooh, those are very bright. Hmm. Well, but these little guys. That works. Although, let's see what we have in this lemon yellow. I think. All right, let's backtrack. We gotta find something, something in here. Let's see. I think these are. Those are too big. We're gonna go back to these. They're very similar, but they are different, so. Okay. And by all means, you could do them in different sizes. Uh, but I think that looks really neat. So, let's start stringing. So I am gonna use tonight, um, the Beetle on seven strand, it's really good for heavier pieces. This piece is really heavy. So make sure you're paying attention to um, use a nice sturdy wire. This one has the seven strands and it uses a two or three crimp tube, uh, crimp bead or crimp tube. And those are the kind you want for something heavy. So, I think somewhere there's a chart on weight limit or like weight. You know, if you use a lot of gemstones, it is something to pay attention to because they do get quite heavy. All right. So, let's put our focal on here. And. Let's see if we want to add anything. Do I have enough of these? Nope. Oh, yes, I do. Yay. Okay. We're going to use these. So, yeah, the classes at Jesse James Beads for the summer camps are amazing. I, I hope... I will share what I made with you all. Um, I'll be doing a finished jewelry update for that for sure. I have tons of jewelry made that I've got to do finished jewelry updates for. So um, I think, not this week, this week we'll do Tutorial Tuesday for sure. And then next week, uh, I think I'm gonna do a week long series of finished jewelry. So my thought is every night, uh, Monday through Friday, or actually maybe I'll start Sunday, Sunday through Friday, I am going to showcase finished jewelry. Uh, a lot of you asked to see some things and I have not done a finished jewelry update in quite a while. It's been too long. So, you're going to get, oh, actually, there may be one or two product reveals in there because I did get some new things from Jesse James Beads that I want to show you that are on their website. That'll probably be 
uh, after Tuesday to, well, let's, let me think about that. Well, that'll be before I do the, that week-long series, actually. I am adding some other things. Uh, I've got some really cute little silver um, spacer beads that I thought would be nice interspersed and kind of break up the monotony. So I'm just picking and choosing as I go, uh, as the mood strikes me. This is, you know, of course not planned. Uh, I will tell you, oh, one of the classes was polymer clay, making polymer clay beads, which I've never done before. And oh my gosh, uh, that's scary because I think I might get addicted to that. But um, we had so much fun. Um, any of you who know anything about polymer clay probably know who Cindy Holt is. And if you don't, look her up. S-Y-N-D-E-E, -E, that's how she spells her name. Holt. H-O-L-T. She has classes on YouTube. And oh my word, is that polymer clay fun? I can't say enough about it. I had so much fun. And then you bake them. Oh man. It was so much fun. I am definitely going to do more polymer clay. So I may bring that to you as well. We use this stuff called Sculpey. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you've used polymer clay. Uh, I know there's quite a few channels out there that show people how to use it. Uh, I haven't, hadn't, oops, pardon me, hit the camera. I hadn't gotten that far, but um, boy, oh boy, is that fun stuff. Um, and very easy to use. And you almost, can, you cannot make an accident. I mean, everything you do, even if you didn't mean to do it, looks like you meant to do it. So that was right up my alley, let me tell you. But yeah, that was fun. We did a beautiful seed bead project uh, for earrings. Meredith Roddy taught that. She is like the muse when it comes to seed beading. Seed beading. Also, Danielle Wicks did a beautiful uh, bracelet with a bear and a fish and a cool technique with seed beads. She also, she works with John Bead, I believe. And I'm sure you all have heard of her too. Uh, and she's lovely. And then of course, Gem Hawks did amazing wire work. I mean, I just can't say enough about these classes. Okay, so now I'm adding these little guys. I'll show you, I mean, these are just wire wrapped, just rondelles um, with, you could just do a, a head pin with the ball at the end. If you don't have these, these came strung on something I got from Michael's. I don't remember exactly where when I got them, but I've had them for a while and I bought them in a bunch of different colors because I knew they'd come in handy. And I like stacking them like this. It adds a neat texture to your, your necklaces. Adds a unique little twist. So when you hold up your necklace like this, see it makes kind of a a really nifty little like texture. I like that. And you can do that with any beads. You can bead your beads. And that's kind of what, um, like Danielle Wicks, this class that we took with her, she was putting seed beads around other beads. It's very cool. Um, so I recommend those. Then we did a happy hour, virtual happy hour, and we got to hear the history of Jesse James Beads with, from Sarah James. That was awesome and you get a bead buddy at camp. They are gonna do something I know for, they do like winter workshop. So think about that. Um, it's a load of loads of fun. You learn a lot. You get gorgeous, gorgeous beads. And uh, let's see, Brittany Shavers, Turquoise Street. She, she taught a class and Wendy Whitman taught a class. Uh, with really cute sari fabric. Um, I haven't done that one yet. Then we had, uh, who else was there? Um, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, Neelay Patel, who does the silver silk. We had a class with him. It was fabulous. And I could just go on and on. But anyway, I, I recommend it. If you you know, get
get subscribed to Jesse James Bead's newsletter. Also, they have a Facebook group called Secret Stash. And then you can get the 411 on the next... I think they'll do something for Halloween. They'll do like a little mini workshop. They tear, they team up with um, Sufflex, I think, for that. I hope they'll do that again this year. They did one last year. It was super fun. And then uh, Winter Workshop. That's a blast. I did that last year. We, learned, we made uh, ornaments and all kinds of cool stuff. So definitely, definitely recommend you popping over there onto the Jesse James Beads website and sign up for that newsletter or get, get you know, join their Facebook group. I will mention it in mine too, if you're in my Facebook group. If you're not in my Facebook group, check out Marcy Creates in the groups. If not, you can follow me over on Pinterest for some inspiration. Uh, I pin stuff there all the time. And I also do try to put some things into the Facebook group as well. Gems, gemstones, I think, are gorgeous. You know, um, I subscribe to some uh, group that d posts those. And I think they're like a geology group. And they're always, all that stuff is just, oh, so stunning. And these are too big. I'm yapping. I'm yapping again, guys. But I, I do recommend checking all that out there's just so much you can learn maybe i'll do some more flowers so i hope everybody had a nice weekend i had a very long sleep this weekend i don't know my body just said you need to stop <laughs> so usually i'm up early because i want to get to all my projects not this time nope even my doggies were like, what's going on, mom? Usually up and drinking coffee by now, what's up? But, you know, sometimes, sometimes you just gotta stop. Take a break. Whatever it is you thought you were gonna do, still gonna be there. It's not like there's a time limit. Or I try to, I put more pressure on myself, I think, sometimes. I guess we all do that. Like, I gotta get this done, I gotta get that done. Sometimes your body just says, you know what? You need to slow down, Missy. So that's what I did. I slowed down. But I did watch my my classes. I had to, like I said, I had to work for the... The classes were... Some of them were during the day and some were at night. Uh, so I had to catch them. They, they replay them on Facebook. And you can go back to them as many times as you want which with some of the projects, you kind of want to keep going, you know, looking at them. I highly recommend it though. It's so much fun. Okay. Is this adorable? I love this. So we still have some room at the top. I'm going to move these over, but I really like this. I don't think I want to add anything else to it. Um, and so now the thought is, how are we going to finish this off? And I kind of have a couple of thoughts. Um, I do like the leather. We could continue with the leather. And that would tie that in. So we could do that. Um, let's do that. So how are we going to do that? So we're just basically gonna make a loop with the beading wire and we'll tie this on. And let me cut this, I think. How much of this do I want? We'll attach our findings. Oh, actually, you really, on the leather, don't need findings, you can just tie it, which is nice. And it's very nice against your neck, but I don't think we need this much of it. So let me cut some of this. I think we don't even need that much. Let's see. Let's see how big this is. So this is, 
I'm just measuring like nine and a half inches. I'm gonna double this over. So we're not gonna have, so it'll be half of that to add to our necklace, almost five inches and double that over. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a loop with our, let me find our, our many tube bead crimp tubes that I spilled earlier. <laughs> and we're just gonna make a loop. Let me just pull this. This is an easy way to end a necklace, I think. Um, and if you don't have clasps, but you have leather, or like linen, like that waxed linen stuff. I, I think the leather works better though, but you can do this instead. So I'm gonna make a pretty large loop and we're gonna, it's kind of a boho rainbow extravaganza, this beat, this necklace. We're just gonna crimp it, turn it sideways, crimp it again. Okay, and then we'll cut this. Now we'll add our leather. And I think this time I will knot it. Let's see if it's gonna cooperate. You could wire wrap it again. That would be fine. That's pretty bulky. I think uh, I think we will wire wire wrap it. Or. Oh, or we could do the slip knot thing. Let's try that. So for that, you're gonna put your loop through here, through the loop. And you're gonna take your ends and slide them through this way. And you're just gonna make a little connection like that. Then you can knot these at the ends if you want. And there's even little, um, I think I'm gonna leave them, but I am gonna trim the ends so they look nicer. I like to cut them on an angle. I need new nippers. And then what you can do is tie the, this with this on the other side, I'll show you in a minute. Um, but they have these things that if you don't wanna do the, I'll have to show you, I have some of them. You would flush cut this instead. There's a little metal brad that you can put on here that has a hole and you could put little dangles. Maybe we'll do that next time I do anything like this. So let me get this one. Another thought is to add a circle, uh, like a any kind of finding that's round, and you could add your leather to that. But we're going boho rainbow glam tonight. Boho rainbow glam. I dare you to say that 10 times. So we're gonna make another big loop. And they're not gonna be perfect, but uh, just make them as close as you can. We're just gonna eyeball it. That's about right. We don't want our wires crossing. And of course you can use a bead 
a crimp cover if you want. We'll save this maybe for earrings. Let me grab this other wire. So we're gonna, I mean, leather. We're gonna make another knot. Let's see. And it's all kinked up because it was around a piece of cardboard. It'll relax as, as it hangs. Um, and as you wear it, you know, all the little divots that are in it now, don't worry about that. Those will go away. Okay. Cut those ends. probably going to be cleaning up beads till midnight with those that those that fell are really tiny <laughs> okay so then you can tie it like this and if this isn't long enough you can always make it longer I think I did nine inches on each side um, What's nice about the leather is it's soft against your neck. And it just adds, well, it just adds a little bit of, um, I don't know, softness, I guess you could say. I'm trying to make it a little bit longer. I probably didn't make these long enough. Uh, I, I would say if you do this, make it 10 inches instead of the nine and a half. Um, I'm not mad at this, but it's a little bit challenging to cut. I mean, not. I'm not the world's greatest knot maker either. Um, but I do like the way the leather and the beads go together. Here we go. It is quite stiff. So as you work with it, it'll get more pliable. Unfortunately, it's not like the wire where you can just warm it. <laughs> but it will it will work. I think there's leather conditioners out there too. Ugh. Sorry guys. We'll just have to uh, chalk it up to needs to be longer. I'll do that off camera. You get the idea. Um, now, if you don't want to do this, so say you didn't want to do this. Let me pull these out of here for a minute. Say this is just, you're like, yuck, I don't like it. I'm starting to feel that way because this wasn't long enough. Um, then you could add your toggle clasps. They came, the box came with a toggle clasp. So, let's see. Got to find what I did with them. Oh, here they are. So we have some cute toggle clasps. So you could just add the toggle clasps instead. And if this isn't long enough, uh, then you can use some chain. I didn't want to use the chain today, but you could. Uh, I'm gonna get some longer pieces of leather, I think, uh, to make this, or maybe we'll just wire wrap it. You know, I'm just, I'm stubborn like that. Let's, let's wire wrap it. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to give up. And I think I did cut those ends already. So let's see, where did our pieces go? It's all about design on the fly. You, you try and then if it doesn't work, you try again. So I think this will work nicely. Yeah. So you're gonna wire wrap this. I think I have more wire over here. I almost, I think I used up that spool. I did. But I think I have more, I bought more.
lot of 22. Here's 26. I really do like the 26 gauge for this portion. That'll be better. It make more sense too, since we have that treatment down there. And you know, as I've said before, if something doesn't work, you just try it again. It is not a big deal. That's part of making jewelry. And I always don't mind making the mistakes or changing my mind on camera because I think, feel like that teaches you more than if I did it perfectly. Um, you know it's okay to mess up. If I'm willing to show 1178 people I messed up, <laughs> you can do it. It's okay. <laughs> So I'm gonna wire wrap this. Yeah, I think this is a better idea. So glad I thought of it later. But hey, it's all trial and error. I think it was, I don't, I, I don't quote people well, but I think it was Einstein, might've been Einstein or somebody that said, or maybe it was Edison that said he, he hasn't succeeded. He found a thousand and one ways how not to do something. <laughs> I can relate to that. So right now I'm just trying to cover up that one little loose piece that I started with. Um, the little end right here, work my way up. And that way you only have one piece to worry about tucking in because this is going to be closer to somebody's neck, so you want to make sure um, when you cut it, you cut it where it's not going to get them. In fact, I think it in the front would be best because then it's not up against anybody's skin. Then we can trim this. Let's do the other side. Much better. Much, much, much better. I just want to make these approximately the same size. And let's see, how much was, let's, let me tell you how much wire I used. It's about 12 inches, okay. 26 gauge, 12 inches, and then we will wire wrap this. And I just literally just hold the, the leather between my finger and my thumb, and I wrap it the smaller piece first to kind of tie it down so it doesn't go anywhere. And then you can come in with the longer piece and wrap. Just like that. Make sure that part that's sticking out gets covered. There we go. And then we'll squinch. Squinch. This also work hardens the wire when you um, do this with your pliers and just, you know, you don't have to squeeze super hard, but, oh, there's a end I don't want sticking up. 
There we go. Yeah, this work hardens it. And um, so it's not going anywhere. If you want to put glue, you know, I wouldn't put very much glue, but you could put a little. I'm going to trim that. I think I already did the ends. Yeah, I did. So now you could put your little knot on the end. This will look much better. Or like I said, those little brads um, where you can hang dangles. That looks really, really cute. But since this is gonna be the working end of the necklace for you taking it on and off and tying it, I would leave the dangles alone, but then you can tie it, see, like this. Much better. That worked much better <laughs> than what I was doing originally. So you have, you know, you want to make it longer or shorter, you can. And then it does echo what we have going on down here. Uh, so a bunch of you like to see this on a bust uh, at the end of my video. So I'm going to go get a bust and put this on so you can see it hanging. And I'll be right back. Okay guys, so here's the finished necklace hanging on a bust. And as you can see, here's our focal piece with the leather. And then we have all our howlite and glass beads graduated up to the leather you really can't see up here, but it will be comfortable on the neck. And then we have our yellow or orange, red orange, pink, mauve, purple, periwinkle, blue, blue, green, and green. Nice soft uh, thing to put on the stone so it doesn't get scratched. We did throw in a few little silver flowers and spacer beads and some bead caps throughout. And as you can see, those purple clusters are kind of neat. So yeah, so here is our Boho Rainbow Extravaganza with the Bargain Bead Box, Market Fresh. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one. Y'all take care of yourselves. Be safe. Let's pray for some world peace and I'll see you on the next video.